Architect community, it's 4 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for the Entree Architect Context and Clarity live conversation. No, it's not live. It's just Context and Clarity conversation. It's book club day. <laughs> Happy Friday. Uh, welcome. When you get here, say hi. Let us know when you're here and let us know where here is for you. Where are you joining this conversation from? Hey, this looks a little bit different from here. Yeah, you are here. You're at that little red dot on the, uh, I'm on the map there. Perfect. Chris, Christian's also Christian here. is also here. For a minute, I didn't um, even think I was here, but now I know I am. Now you know you are. I'm, I'm glad that you have that confirmation. Uh, if you've never been here before, glad you're here. Welcome. This is uh, We do this every weekday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern. And uh, the last Friday of every month is our book club discussion. So today is August 26th, last Friday of August. We will be discussing the... Uh, the book that the Context and Clarity Book Club book, that sounds extremely redundant, that uh, I, I hope you've been reading all month. It's How well, to Write One Song, yeah, Loving the Things We Create, and, and How They Love Us Back. No, I hope it didn't take you that long. It is a, uh, it's a short read. So, um, so we're going to get into it here in just a minute. So say hi when you get here. Uh, great to have you here. Let us know that you're here. Let us know where here is, where are you joining from? And uh, welcome. Welcome to the book club discussion. Christian is first on my screen. He's joining us from Ithaca, New York. Welcome back, Christian. You are the first in, as I said, which means you are the winner of today's John Kenny Memorial Crochet book cover. Woo. That's That seems appropriate for a uh, yeah. uh, book club discussion day. And Wendy Brown. Oh yeah. So how many of you, how many of your grandmothers had a Bible with a crocheted book cover on it? Yeah, not mine. Just throwing that out there. Wendy Brown, welcome back. Actually, to West my West grandmother West. actually crocheted a Bible. Paper. Crocheted a Bible? It was like an well, illuminated manuscript, but it was crocheted. <laughs> Especially when it was backlit. Yeah. It, you know, after that, her eyes were ruined. I bet they were. Scott Thrift, welcome back. He says pizza's on the way in San Francisco. Glad you're here. Send some of that pizza this way. I'm kind of hungry. That Emma, welcome good. back from New Jersey. And Chris Novelli, welcome from Massachusetts. Glad you're joining us today as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, as you get here, say hi. Let us know. If you're in if you're on Facebook right now and you're commenting away, you're saying hi. And you're looking at the screen going, hey, why why does my comment not show up? Uh, it's because you're in a private Facebook group. And there are these policies, these privacy policies. You have to give Facebook permission to let your name, your likeness, your comments out to restream where we are right now. So in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, thanks to Catherine, there is a URL, chat.restream.io slash FB, as in Facebook. And um, type that into your browser window. A couple of clicks later, you'll give Facebook permission to um, to let your comments join us here in the conversation. So, again, thanks for joining us. We've got uh, Jefferson says Facebook is delayed, but we've got some other uh, got some other folks. Let me click on this. Let me just check that. Nope, Facebook looks to be good at the moment. So, uh, but thanks for joining us. Via LinkedIn, Jefferson. Love that. That actually helps push it out on the LinkedIn side. Thanks for joining us from Los Angeles. And Jessica, also from Los Angeles, she wants to know if it's happy hour. As long as you're happy, it's happy hour. And no. we're here for it. Glad you're nice. joining us, Jessica. And everybody else. Let's see. I haven't seen a, a, a Twitter, a Twitch, or a YouTube yet. So maybe we'll have some folks joining us from those platforms. Before uh, before our hour Twitch. is up, Twitch. <laughs> I was told that if I could make a lot of money playing games on Twitch, that people would would pay to watch someone my age play games, which I found a little insulting. But on the other hand, maybe maybe that's an idea. Well, I, I think what they would the pay boards? to watch old what pay to watch old people play games. Yeah, yeah, because it's funny, I guess. <laughs> Except for that, they don't really realize how into video games but, I used to be. That's so, like when you uh, have the uh, like the young kids here here like uh Toto for the first time and they're like wow. Yeah. 
Look, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Where have you been, like, though? Have, have you, you not ever been to the mall? They play, yeah, they right, play or the supermarket. What the heck is like songs from the 80s, right? Like, Music. you never heard the Doobie Brothers ever, yeah, exactly. Everywhere. You know, exactly. Yep, yeah. Well, speaking of songs, not necessarily <laughs> Toto, but um, the uh, the book for this month, as I said a minute ago, is How to Write One Song. It's actually what happened? No, stop that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, it's the book that we read this month is written by the frontman of Wilco, the band Wilco, out of the Chicago area, named Jeff Tweedy. The title is How to Write One Song, Loving the Things We Create and How They Love Us Back. And mm. it was recommended. Last, last month we read Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Um, honestly, oh. I forgot to pick out the new book. Rod made a recommendation, as did others, and his recommendation was how to write one song. So, thanks for that, hmm. Rod. You're welcome. Like I said, I just wanted to talk a little bit about. I thought we might have some fun just talking about prof creative process, not necessarily uh, anybody being thinking they have to write songs, but you know we're in a creative field and i think every pretty much everybody got into it because they they were creative or thought they were creative or wanted to be creative and that's how we got into it so i thought it'd be fun to talk about it a little bit and see how people do things and and uh well, you know well yeah, you know what I, i've been waiting for all day rod you've been waiting for the songs i wrote yeah, exactly. Well, I was I was gonna wait to a little later to do Oh, we don't want to jump on that. Early. I mean I've, like I said, they're on there, but Okay. I thought I'd know. bring it up. Like you know what, when you want to put it in the private chat, I can put it yeah, up on I'll, the screen. I'll put it, you know, um they're, right here, they're so on you there. can put it there. You can put it there, see there, and then, then I can put it up on the uh, screen for uh, everybody okay. else to look up. Yeah. Sure. Okay, sorry Jeff, I interrupted you. I was just too excited about Rod's uh I'm excited about about the song I wrote about Alabama today, though. After the, can you read that one? I was hoping that James Polk would have written the music for it, but I know he was busy. I sent him like, I sent it to him, and then I was like, write some music for this. But <laughs> he's busy. He's making a living. So. Well, hopefully, hopefully he will join us. Um, but yeah, but I, I um, go ahead. Otherwise, I just want to remind people that they're welcome to come join us on the screen, and I can send, <clears throat> I can send up to I think eight more people the link. So if you yeah. want to be one of those special eight people, yeah. If you if you'd like to join us, just message Catherine, and she will send you the link. Um, typically, when, when, what we've been doing on Fridays, we've been opening up the Zoom room for everybody. Um, just we're simulcasting this right now out to all the places that we always do for Context and Clarity Live. You may have noticed that every once in a while we we have trolls drop in to the um, into the room, and so I'm a little hesitant to just publish the link um, out to the entire world. So that that's the only reason we're guarding the link right now. If you want to join us on screen, just message Catherine on <laughs> or on or you can just put it in the comments, and I will. Well, I'm more yeah. likely to see you if you put it in the chat, and then I'll just I'll send you a, a link okay. on Facebook. Okay, so Michelle says, "Sure, I'll come." Well, welcome, Michelle, and Barry. Okay, it looks like Michelle. Barry too. Okay, so if you, you can come on and get a troll, come on, teach us, you know, some crypto, do some crypto, <laughs> bro. Yeah, tell us how we could make money from home. I am dying to know. Nobody ever seems to, uh, you know, take them up on that. <laughs> make well, a lot of money from home. All my money <laughs> yeah, me all. too. All my money. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, back back to what you said earlier, Rod. I, I'm. This is another. This is another one of those books that I w would not have been on my radar. Right? It's Amazon wouldn't have suggested it to me. Audible wouldn't su have suggested it to me. But I'm glad you recommended it because as I started to listen to it, you know what you were just saying about the creative process. I think is a hundred percent true. Um, I was listening through, and most of you know that when I use Audible, I use, I think it's called the Clips feature. So it's basically bookmarks. Yeah. Um, the first Do you ever go half, back and listen to those? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes, uh, yeah. I, I I actually use those. I'm I'm working on something right now where I'm I'm going through. It's a different book, but I'm going through clip by clip and and um, using that information. But um, the I, I'm going to say the first half. I don't know if it's literally the first half, but before Jeff Tweedy starts actually going step by step through the writing process, when he's just talking more broadly about songs and, and creative process, I, w- I was hitting that, that clip button a lot. And I don't know what how many total, but a lot of that really resonated with me because of exactly what you just said. It's yes, he's talking about writing a song, but you could substitute the words, and he could be talking about designing something, creating architecture. Uh, it's it's creative process, so that's uh, like writing a novel or something. Sure, could be anything. Yeah, and what there was a lot of um, his process too. I mean, he's he's very. We were you know we were talking about time blocking the other day, and um, it was. You know, he's totally has this process of of dedicated work time. You know, yeah. it's his job, but it's it's not just like he's hit by some muse. I think a lot of people who aren't in creative fields just think it's like some muse inspirational kind of thing that, that comes along and, and hits you. Um, as it did for me this morning when I was walking my dog and I wrote my song about Alabama. Okay, I need to hear that one, Rod. Can you give us can you give us some of that? I can give you some of it. Sure. All right. Um, it's sad though. That's okay. I'm in a pretty good I, mood. I, I can I take it. I was already crying. I was already crying. Um, is there a mute thing on here? There's no mute on this. Right? Do you want me to mute mute you? I think no, I, I just wanted to know. Yeah. I just <laughs> there no, is I just yeah. If there was a possibility of mute myself, but there is no, there is. You can um, down there the thing that looks like a microphone. No, I was I was that. already I was crying when they were talking about the um about life and like how it's inspiration, you know, and how like like artists have to have to kind of be um angst ridden and then and then he was like well everybody everybody has issues <laughs> you know it's like they're just not writing about them so so that was that was a nice thing because you know people people tend to like say oh artists have all this angst right instead mm-hmm. of instead of really it's like no they're writing about their angst right it's like there's a lot of other people that have all those things they're just not writing songs and and poetry and everything else about it so yeah but they should though it make them feel better probably yeah, they don't yeah, have the release. Yeah, probably. But yeah. I, you know, I just kind of like that. Instead of it being like, oh, you know, you guys have issues because you're creative. It was like, no, you're writing about these things that everybody else has, but you're just able, you know, you have the creativity in able to, you know, in order to express it. I, you know, I think that's. I, I wonder about that a lot, especially where we are in 2022 and everything that's gone on in the last two and a half years, or. or five years or something like that, six years. Um, I I wonder how much of of what we see and how much of what we're realizing is simply more people saying more things out loud. You know, Mm -hmm. we've been experiencing things, been thinking things, you know, and of course there's social media and and all of those things. Social media has been around for obviously for a while, but but I, I think that's a you know, what you're saying about people writing about more people writing about, I think that's, I think that there's a lot of truth to that across the board. Um, over in the, uh, we lost him over in the uh, chat. Um, a couple of people, Barry says there are some, some great bits in the book. A lot of my takeaways were around being creative to a deadline or for a reason rather than waiting for the inspiration to hit you, which is similar to what Rod said a minute ago. I, uh, I, I agree with that. Chris says, I like the book and can see how many of the creative exercise he talks about can be used as inspiration for similar architectural exercises. I, as I was walking and listening to this book one morning, and maybe it was because it was getting closer to the, the, uh, college semester starting and thinking about class, I thought, you know, if you're teaching a design studio, I could see somebody totally using this, this book as 
inspiration for their their uh, architecture, their design studio, hundred percent. Yeah, my um, the guy who was ahead of my graduate program always uh, would say that we shouldn't waste time while we were sleeping, and that we could be figuring out designs in our, you know, all you have to do is think about your design before you go to sleep. When you wake up, you'll have the answer. Right. It's magic. Like, good. Don't want to waste that time sleeping or anything. You can't control your dreams. You can't. You think you can't about them when dreams. you go to sleep. Yeah. So, All right, Rod. Right. I need to know. I need to know the Alabama song before. Hang on a second. Yeah. We're, we're having then, a small. You know, we're the having a small sleeping. animal pet drama here. Oh no. <laughs> well. The thing about him sleeping and then having been in a band or whatever, and he was saying like, oh, you really only need to get like, um, you really only need to be awake for like two hours a day or something like that (laughs) in order to be able to get up. That's like the polar opposite of my day. (laughs) (laughs) True, true. Oh, okay. So, Rod, here's... Hey, here's... So you knew this... uh, what what Windeard here? She says, "We so this is Wendy Brown in in um, uh, um, Western Massachusetts." Wendy says, "We in the Berkshires have the Solid Sound Festival started by Wilco." Did you know that? Yeah. Rod? Well, I it? I heard of that. I heard of that Solid Sound. Yeah. But, I don't even um, know who Wilco is. I got I, I guess I could have looked it up while I was reading the book. Well, you know, if you if you lived in Chicago rather than Boston, you'd know who they were, because they're they're, they're, they're actually going to be in uh, San Diego Chicago on the seventeenth of September. Well, are you going? Uh, maybe. No, I, I went to Robert Plant. Yeah, so Same, but you did get Allison Krauss. Okay. That was nice at the. We, the show but that you were misbehaving the there from what i heard the last time i saw wilco was at the marat in indianapolis <laughs> no kidding <laughs> yeah and i have a shirt somewhere i was going to wear my wilco shirt but I, it's in the wash or something i don't know <laughs> apparently uh, apparently and i saw him a couple robert times in Chicago. Fans, yeah apparently older robert plant fans are not do not like people standing up at the concerts which i realized when this person <laughs> came up from behind me and said and the thing is is that i wasn't in front i wasn't in front of their view of the concert i was in front of their view of the diamond vision so it's like and i i really don't take up that much room i think he probably could and there were 20 empty seats there were 20 empty seats next to them so they could have just moved over a couple seats but no no, no. they had to come up no. and tell me to, you know, could you please sit down? I can't see around you. Okay. We went to see uh, a Bob Dylan, <laughs> and uh, it was like going to like a geriatric home. I mean, it was like all these people with walkers and canes yeah. and wheelchairs, and I'm like, yeah. Well, well, we were there with a the wheelchair, which that was a whole other thing. But yeah, but yeah, it's it was it was interesting. Well, I've been it doing was, a lot of thinking lately about being yeah. loud, apparently. Oh, like, what does it mean to be old? Now, when we're in nursing homes, they'll be playing Prince or whatever. It'll be playing completely different music than, than old people music. But that well, will be old people music. That is old people music Wilco. now. I'm There's watching all these guys. Anyway, but I'm getting off music. track. Actually, Wilco has a song called When You Wake Up Feeling Old. So... Perfect. <laughs> I, I got from this book that he does, there's no subject he won't consider. When it's it comes true. to a uh, song. <laughs> Speaking of which, can we just hear the song about Alabama? I'm starting to think you don't have. Well, oh, okay. I'm sorry. We had a we had a cat um, that did some <clears throat> unadvised uh, activity. Okay. Okay. Ready? <clears throat> yep. I don't want to read this whole thing. See, it's like. All right. Well, how about just like two verses okay. and maybe the chorus? All right. Okay. <clears throat> it's called "One Reason to Go to Alabama." Kind of like John Prineish. Okay. So. Thinking back, she was a young girl, hard candy at the general store. At 17, she married a raw boy, raw boned boy from limestone, farmed cotton just out of Ardmore. Go down to the chapel and fall on your knees, boy. Believe what you have to believe. There's one reason to go to Alabama. You can always leave. 
That's the, that's the punch. There's line. several verses. Wow. I like that. I like that raw bone thing in there, Rod. It was that was good. Did you hear the part about uh, six hundred acres and a Cadillac on the top? I don't think morning? Jeff didn't hear about that. Jay, we, we and, about Jay and James were talking about that. Yeah. Well, that let me just read the bring, very bring end. that up. Yeah. Here's the very end. end. Okay. So basically, this is a song about a a woman who married a farmer and now he's dead. Um, ah, spoiler. The last the last part of it goes. 50 years on, emphysema's his mistress. He finally left her alone to pack up memories in boxes from Walmart, some as heavy as stone. 600 acres, a developer bought it for tracks to build America's future for the Amazon plant workers, assisted living, and a new Cadillac. Wow. So, Rod, did you use any of the it's strategies? It's supposed to be funny, oh, Jeff. It's supposed to be sad. It's sad no, it is. It's great. No, I think it's, no, it's great. very good, Rod. He's yeah, he's um good. happy. He's so happy that you have a good song. That's what is happening. I am. Well, I mean, and did you I want to hear it on I the mean, radio? Six hundred acres. Well, the six hundred acres with you know, it's it's about Jay's right. Jay's land of how the yeah. Country. Well, it's about yeah. That's he said. He just that. borrowed it. It's yeah, he about, said it. You know, but... selling your farm for subdivisions which Let you get a car for all it. my relative farmers did so yep anyway, mm. got some of those well, what did you, you say chris you you were i said did you use the strategies from the book to actually that all came to me when i was walking my dog nice. um which is mm. one of probably one of the strategies yeah that's one of the strategies mm -hmm. yeah it'll just yeah. come to you you know what i was thinking about his strategies when i was watching someone sing what a fool believes today on tiktok and i thought they must have just cut those up and mixed them around so that makes no sense those lyrics but it, so it made me look at that in a different from a different angle you know how they write that song yeah i, I like the i like when he you know when he talked about picking out just um five you know things that you see in your room and then and then you know making uh picking out like five verbs to go along with it and just kind of like writing about it and i thought that that could be really applicable to like architectural exercises right just maybe mm -hmm. picking out five five different things that, that you see or five different styles and maybe five different things you know that you know how, of how it could be used and just sitting down and sketching it right and just you're not really, it it's work. not really for a project. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, to get your brain activated. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, the, it, the, the difference of course, is if you're, if you're doing architecture, I guess you're, you know, you're dealing with program and things like that, that may inhibit or, or not inhibit, but they sort of frame that possibility of creativity a little differently. But, you know, songwriters have the same limitations, right? They've got yeah. time. They've got, you know, it's thematic. What they're writing might yeah, be the conceptual. Words. Or they limit That's themselves intentionally to give themselves a structure and a system to work within. So, I mean, I think it's applicable. I don't think... I don't think one song is really like a building though a building is more i guess like a concept album or something so yeah right that is a phone ringing hang on a second oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well i think um we had spoke this morning about about how there was a first year project that they um that they did that was a you know a few years behind me about how they they had a musical instrument and then they had to draw the instrument and then like cut it up in different things and i think that they were even supposed to do some of the pieces um with a with a jigsaw and actually make wood models out of it but it was a way for them to like break apart from just these rectangular spaces and like open up open up those rectangular spaces with those things so it was taking the instrument and, and drawing it and cutting it just to get used to other uh, you know, building forms. Did everyone have that assignment? Because I had that same assignment too. No, 
I didn't have that. I didn't, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I'm surprised Catherine didn't have it because I thought it was from, I thought it was like from somebody that came over from Cyark that brought it, but. Might have been. I mean, we had to, we had to draw our neighbor's head. So we had to, uh, you know, draw that with French curves and then make sections out of the head. And then we use the head for shapes rather than an instrument. Hmm. I think that's it was hard because we had to actually come up with the um, way to measure it. You know, and then have all the points. But anyway, no, we didn't do that. We did the um, brick, brick on a bridge thing. Did you guys do that? The bridge project. You no, know, we did the egg, the egg dropping the egg from the second floor. Mm. Interesting. Well, yeah. uh, okay. Now I want to know what Rod's uh, famous songs on WBCN were. They aren't oh. famous. Um, I just sent a. I just copied it. I know. I see you. that. It's exciting. Those are songs that I listened to them um, yesterday. Uh, when I was a teenager, I went to Boston to live with some guys that I was in a band with ever since I was in junior high. And I ended up not performing with them, but I wrote songs with them and we wrote songs together. And, um, we wrote a lot of songs and we were basically in the process of kind of evolving and changing what we were doing. We weren't kind of going from sort of a teenage, I guess, pop rock band to some more involved thematic things. And we got approached by a guy who was a local musician who started a record label. And he said, oh, I like your guys' band. I want to produce, you know, some songs. So he picked this. He paid for it, which was expensive at the time. Recording studios are expensive. And uh, he picked the songs and he produced them. And they were songs that were older in our repertoire. And they were kind of away from where we were going. But it was like, hey, you know, go for it. And... They sound pretty good with Bose headphones on, I have to say, but they're kind of, you know, imagine yourself being 19 years old and being, you know, uh, I almost listen to it and go, oh, it's kind of like an incel. These guys, it's like incel music or something, you know, incel frustrated, music. sexually frustrated boy music kind of thing. <laughs> okay, so so those are what those songs are about. This so, is 19, 1980, Ron? It's like or? 1980, yeah. So that's 40 years ago, right? 41 years ago. But um, if you listen to them with headphones on, they sound pretty good. The one song kind of sounds like the theme song from Friends, but it's, uh, you know, like 10 years before that. So oh, no. That is not what I was expecting. <laughs> you know? Well, so. I was just thinking about that Believe It or Not, I'm Walking on Air song from, I think, 1980. <laughs> Believe it or not, George isn't at home. <laughs> I was trying to think about what I was listening to in 1980 since you uh, asked about that this morning. Yeah. And then I've got, there's another song also that is on YouTube um, by a band called the Gizmos. And um, my friend uh, who was in this high school band with me who didn't go to Boston, uh, he and I wrote this song. Down in Indiana. It's, it's a pretty funny song, but it is so uh, non woke. You know, it's like uh, it's got a lot of like pretty uh, stupid lyrics in it, but it's about mm -hmm. it. But it's a fun song about a guy who was a chamber musician who became who sold out to become a punk rocker. So that, you know, that's what it was about. He'd be. And uh, it's it's pretty funny song. So, and that song actually was on a record label that was actually John Cougar's first record label. Before he was John Cougar Mellencamp. Before when he was Johnny Cougar. Yeah. Johnny Cougar. Yeah. So that's the connection there. But up, oh, look who's here. And I can link that one. I can link that one too, Catherine. If you want, if you want to hear that one. Yeah, well, I was just listening to. I can't get James on here. Oh, we're Maybe coming. I have to um, turn that off. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I don't know if everybody else, if the audience, can hear you. Yeah. 
I well, love shirt, Rod. Can anybody hear me? A, uh, yeah. That is a uh, tie dye shirt hear from me. Puerto Rico. Oh, nice. Uh, let's Just well, I'm officially it. off today. So I'm officially off today. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Excellent. I tried, to, I tried to, uh, to link in from my uh, phone, but uh, my iPhone, but uh, they it said that, that the browser was no good. Or yeah, you have to go with a different browser. browser. Yeah, it's a little it's a little persnickety with when it comes to that. Or I would have been uh, here uh, 15 minutes earlier, uh, but I would have been driving like a maniac while I was doing it. So maybe it's <laughs> all for the good. It, it, yeah, it might be better this way. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I get I got here alive. <laughs> that, that's a bonus. Yeah. That's so bonus. what a great topic. Uh, writing songs. Songwriting. What did yeah. I miss? Oh, you missed uh, Rod's Rod's song about Alabama that you're supposed to be putting to music. Oh, yes, really? Eric. Yeah, it's pretty. I sent you, I sent you uh, some screenshots of some lyrics about about being in Alabama. I haven't had a chance uh, to look at it, but I yeah, certainly it's, uh, saw it, but I didn't look at it. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> wrote it when after we had our conversation, and uh, when I took wow. my dog out, and I came back, and I jotted it down. Nice. nice. That's how the creative process works. Exactly. I, I like I like Barry's comment over in the, uh, in the comments. He says, I, I think my favorite bit in the book was him talking about writing a song in a hotel lobby, waiting to be picked up, being able to focus and follow the process with lots going on is a real lesson. I think that was, and I also thought, I think it was in that same chapter where he talked about uh, giving yourself m maybe naturally or, or, or just making them up time limitations. Hey, you can do, you can accomplish something in five minutes or 10 minutes. Um, I think that was yeah. in that same chapter as what Barry's talking about. I, that, I need to that, apply uh, that to my uh, architecture. <laughs> yeah. I, well, well, according to my how, client, how many of, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure according to your client, but, but I think that's, that's the thing, right? You'll fill the amount of time that's available. Yep. And yep. we're all eternal beings, so why not work on it forever? Yeah, well, because you have a meeting coming up at in 10 minutes, so you need to, uh, I call that shaking it out of my sleeve is what I like to do in those situations. Mm -hmm. Didn't, wasn't that my best work comes uh, when I don't have enough time. And uh, because I tend to procrastinate and just think about it and ruminate over it. And I mean, songs or drawings or any decision really. And if I don't, if I have a time limit and it's a hard stop, then, um, I, 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 I just do it. I just do it. And then uh, most times it turns out better. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is about that though, it's like you have that deadline and you think, Oh, you did everything at the 11th hour, but all those other hours that, with things that you didn't do or you just thinking about it or you thought about or you you know napped through or whatever that all counts too it's just that the real distillation happens it's kind of like um if you're if you're water and you're on the stove you're heating up mm -hmm. but yeah. it just takes that last burst of energy whatever it takes the 40 times the energy or whatever to turn yeah. from 211 to 212 kind of thing. Well, I think that that's yeah. always interesting because, you know, when you're going to interview for a project and people say, well, what would you do? And it's like, I don't even know you, you know, it's like, it's almost <laughs> like, like I can't come up with something in two seconds of what I would do for, for you when I, I don't, you know, I don't know you. It's like when I get to know you and then say, so Actually, one of my clients said recently, they said, oh, so did you think, did you think about that when you first came into our house or did it take you a while to like, to like, you know, kind of, what did I, for, uh, you know, a fermentation process or whatever. Um, 
in order to come up. And I said, yeah, I said, it just, I mean, sometimes it takes a while, you know, I mean, it certainly doesn't come up in like five minutes of like, oh yeah, I do this. You know, it's like, I have to, you know, I have to, I have to, you know, meet you. I have to measure the space. I kind of have to look at it, see what your programmatic things are. And then, you know, it's that creative process of like moving everything. And then, you know, and then you come up with the design, but. The process, process yeah. is the word. Yeah. It, ta it, it takes getting from here, the journey from here to there is like, okay, it's like, we don't have a transporter. We can just transport up to the starship. Uh, we have to actually go through the process. And, and when I'm at the end of a deadline and I'm just screaming towards the end and I'm just laying it down, all of that came from process. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Okay. Well, let's start a project. Go, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do it there. I have to think about it and sleep on it and not think about it and, and procrastinate and do this and that. And then I can do it. Um, I have this book that's called the creative process and it has like a bunch of different people in it. And then, and then they were asked and, and some, you know, it's like one of, I mean, it's Pablo Picasso and they were asked, you know, like what kind of, what is your creative process? And they all came up, but you know, and there's, writers and musicians and poets and and artists and sculptors and you know and i don't know whether there's an architect in there or not i don't believe there there is but um but when you look at all of their process it's it's the same process that we use and then also when we were taking this um we took this class in school it's called the designer as a teacher and um frank gary's sister actually taught it because she's an educator she has like an elementary school education <laughs> so she would teach us designer as a teacher class and so she would she would make us like try to go through all of these tools that we used in order to design you know and it would and a lot of it was like okay taking you know taking things apart putting them back together you know rearranging things and so we had to use all of these words trying to explain the process and it's really difficult when you're trying to you know when you're when you're trying to like figure out how you did something, you know, to then go back to like these step-by-step -step process. Cause it's not, you know, and then we had to do a creativity model as far as like what, what we thought. And, and this creativity model shows up in like a ton of other people's things it's that it looks like the same thing where it's like a ball with all these like spikes coming out of it, as far as like things are going in and then it's moving around and then it's going back out with your ideas. I have that book, Creative Pro. I have that book somewhere. And actually, that was a very important book. Like when I initially started working uh, in, in design, it was like, even though I had done stuff before that I thought was creative, I didn't automatically transfer over. I sort of had to reiterate to myself that it is a process and it just doesn't explode out of you. You know, it's not for some people, I suppose it does, but it's, it's more of a, a slow churn kind of thing and finding other people's experiences sort of reiterates that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yeah, and he gets, he gets like, into that in the book too, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. About talking about having that daily routine about, you know, putting in the work and doing those design ex or writing exercises in his case, but it could be design exercises in our case. And, and, you know, in making sure that, that you're constantly, you know, practicing your craft and trying new things and seeing where, you know, following, following things where you, where you never thought it would go and, and, and sort of thing. That's the book. That's the book. It's around here somewhere. We, we can't hear you, Michelle. <laughs> I said, this this is the book right here. See, it's like, it's a, yeah. I got it out like a couple of weeks ago, you know, because I was going through, I'm trying to rearrange stuff, but it's um, edited by Brewster. Is it Gislaine? Is it hmm. Gislaine? Is that supposed G H I S E L I N. You know, yeah. So it's Albert Einstein, Vincent, um, Vincent Van Gogh, Vincent Price. <laughs> Is Vincent Price? Like, yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> Actually, Vincent Price's he's son smart. is uh, was uh, I don't know if he's still alive. He was a uh, he was he's a writer in Albuquerque when I was there. He he wrote about the city and he's a uh, wrote a lot of books about Vincent uh, Price. He he passed Vincent away. Price's son. He passed away recently. BB yeah. BB Price. Yeah. Yeah, he passed away recently. Oh, okay. Mm. He was. Uh, Barry, Barry says that uh, Jeff Tweedy's daily routine is on the more interesting side. I think I struggle to keep up with his timeline. Yeah. yeah. Think- well, he's he's got it. He's got a lot of people actually follow a routine like that. It's hard to imagine well like he said though right he's only got to be awake for three hours a day really (laughs) as a performer so he's got a schedule that's a little bit different than uh nine and he had a place he had a place to go which i think um i forget what what do you call it the loft is that what it was yeah they have a place called the loft that where they do all their recordings and everything so you know what what kind of implications are there post covid um you know where where we've been blending home and work and and some obviously before covid but uh um do you have a dedicated place to create or design yeah um, yeah i guess my, you know, my, my life isn't so, I, I find that I have to do other creative things to take care of my urge to be creative uh, rather than just the work I do, whether that's like uh, creating knitting patterns, which I don't do anymore, or, you know, writing songs, but painting. Th- so that that's interesting. You know, so you're, you're an architect, you design whatever it is that you design, homes or firehouses or museums or whatever. Mm-hmm. D- as an architect, and obviously that's that's the that's the job. That's also the craft, probably the passion. How many architects also have to have, and I mean, like have to have, need to have another different creative outlet? That you know, and, and it, at what point, where where does the need come from? Right. Well, we're getting paid to do this other and clients dictate things and codes dictate things and do i do i need a creative outlet that's just pure and is 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 whatever comes out Mm -hmm. i mean i feel like i i think so yeah architecture has so many constraints and just me i'm i'm fresh off of as in drawings coming in today of a big set of construction documents and that's not creativity. That's um, that's uh, th- that's another side of the brain, and it and it and it's for me. It's 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 pretty draining, and I'm I'm, I'm yearning for a, a creative burst of an outlet. And I've been fitting in um, uh, playing music by myself, like at three and four o'clock in the morning before I go into work, and wow. just so that I can get a little creative. Uh, and not uh, just implode with all the 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 uh, left brain stuff that construction documents entails, and uh, I'm I mean I just last especially the last week I'm just finding myself wanting to get super creative, and so I'm thinking about going to Nashville next weekend to see a couple of uh, bands at the Ryman Auditorium. I mean that's a crazy idea, but why not? Mm. Why is it a crazy idea, James? Because you don't. Well, it's six and a half hours. Six and a half hours away. It's uh, it's not that. Well, it's not that crazy. No, it's not crazy. Take off and go see a couple of bands at the Ryman. That's like driving to L.A. and back in one day for me. Yeah. (laughs) Only it's only it's one way. Where are you going? Who are you going to see? Do you know? Or are you just Watch House is uh, is the band that used to be Mandolin Orange, but they decided that that name was too catchy, so they changed it to Watch House, which took me about a year to remember. And uh, uh, but they're just that kind of band, and uh, they're kind of a, a Americana, a little bit bluegrass, rootsy bluegrass, really great band. And then also uh, 
Caleb Clowder and uh, Reed Weems, who are old time, but also a little bit of crossover bluegrass. And I've taken some lessons from um, Caleb on the mandolin. And so it'd be fun to see him in person. Um, so yeah, a couple of groups that are pretty important to me. Sounds great. I mean, I think we need to do that kind of thing. Anybody want to go? There's a guy. There's a guy over here in um, that teaches photography at Louisiana Tech, and he does tintype photography, that old school tintype stuff. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. did um, photographs for um, Dave Roll, you know, Dave Rollins and Gillian Welch, their records, uh, oh, the tintype nice. covers, and also. Um, John Paul Jones, who was in Led Zeppelin, is, mm -hmm. lives in, I think he lives in Nashville. He's married to, oh, he's married to, he's married to a, a country bluegrass singer. I don't know, can't think of who it is. And he plays mandolin. He, and he's, he, right, he, exactly, he, exactly. He plays mandolin on some of their, their albums, but. Uh, and uh, he's pretty old now, you know, and my friend that was doing the tintype photographs was telling us that you have to be still when you take these photographs because it takes a long time for it to develop. And he couldn't hold still long enough because he was like, he was wrong. too old. He was like shaking. So oh, like the photographer. Take him, take yeah. him. So. Hey, I got a story about uh, uh, Gillian and Dave. My friend Tom Kimmel had had them on his, they agreed to be on one of his albums, on one of the cuts of his albums. So uh, they set up a recording session and it was like three o'clock in the afternoon and three o'clock came and 3.15, 3.30, four o'clock, about five o'clock, they called like out of breath and said, hey, we're so sorry, we overslept. <laughs> we, we overslept and oh, we're just so sorry. It can, it's, can we reschedule? So they rescheduled for 8 p.m on another day <laughs> safer <laughs> well also a lot of recording frankly a lot of recording kind of stuff happens in those wee hours because you know what happens the recording rates go down too well so, 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 so they the, do you know the lot. price of the recording studio goes down at two in the morning or three in the morning I've, or whatever i've heard them talk though that i mean they they do that uh in interviews uh, they stay up all night and play music and and not you know not drinking and uh, playing music but you know playing serious music and they say they try to get try to get to bed uh before the birds start singing else it's law you know it's, they can't get to sleep yep those birds well, are very loud about doing stuff stuff later in the i mean when you are kind of sleep deprived you can let yourself go a little bit more where you know, I mean, I know some people are like, oh, then you just like do drugs or something. I mean, I've never found that to be something that I want to do. But but I mean, I think sometimes when you are sleep deprived in the in like the wee hours of the morning, you're able to actually kind of, you know, punch I through. Think, I think know, through like those those walls that were kind of holding you back before i'm less inhibited when i'm a little bit sleep deprived not a lot sleep deprived but a little bit sleep deprived i i tend to to just well like i said be less inhibited about going ahead and doing the thing the, the creative thing i don't think about it as much i just do it if i'm a yeah little yeah well you're kind of like constrained like oh my god what am i you know it's like oh i have to i have to do this in order to do this and that's like well, why not why not do this you know it's like no we'll just we'll just make it different than you know than kind of what I thought and see if the client likes it you know see if they're not so constrained by traditional design or something that's interesting because well, about sleep a lot of deprivation in like architecture studio like when you're in school I think back to that now and it was it was less because you were up there being creative like you were playing music and you were jamming or whatever it was more because you, it takes so much time to do those things that you never had enough time in normal hours so you're always you know yeah. up all night because you're trying to finish something yeah, yeah. Because you can't judge on how long it takes to do it. Yeah. You, don't, you know, and it's just like, yeah. 
It's like Wilco says, the ashtray says you are up all night. Right. right. <laughs> oh, I like that. What a great yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. As opposed to like, you know, like when we used to go, when I was in this music thing and we had a, we actually had a music, uh, it was like a practice room that we rented, right? Kept all the instruments there and we'd go down there and mess around and we'd stay there all night. But we were, you know, it was kind of a, it was a different kind of all nighter than the architecture studio all nighter. It was just a different vibe. And so. Yeah. No, you are Orders. like, if you're, if you're up late, if, if you, if there is a studio, I mean, I know that at Cal Poly Pomer, we didn't have a studio, but in Denmark, we did have, oh. we did have a studio um, where, you know, where people, and if you're, we're up at night, right. You're like still, you know, you're spending a lot of time with people and you're bouncing ideas off of, off of thing, you know. Right, you right. Know. Yeah. So that's kind of and I mean, of course, I mean one, you know, one time I stayed upright for three days and then I cut like this part of my um Yeah. Michelle, yeah, that's what happens when you stay up that so, long. Yeah. So it's like I know you really shouldn't be doing that. And then I end up in the ER and then of course they're like, oh yeah, an architecture student. But you know, it's like <laughs> But you caught up on your sleep while you were waiting in the waiting room. Oh no, they actually kicked they actually kicked out my roommate who had brought me there because he was just he was just being a total he was an art major and an art and an architecture major and he was just like he was just like way out there and he just started to like say stuff and you know they basically said like you need you need to leave and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> because he was just being like kind of gross with all this stuff, right? Because there's blood and everything out, you know. And then he wanted to sit there and watch it get stitched up, and because he was he was just kind of like that. But yeah, he was made, he wanted to make an art project out of it. Yeah, exactly. And they just said like, you know, you need you need to leave. Like you can't be in here, with, you know. That's Audrey said that she you. read somewhere sleep deprivation has a similar effect on the brain as intoxication. And yeah, but going, not in the going good back way. to our. Yeah, well, are either in a good way, um, necessarily. Wendy said, I sure need another outlet. I like working with my hands. This is the idea of a different uh, creative outlet. Quilting, sheet rocking, replacing sills, and gardening. I need Wendy at my hey, house. I, I was going to say this. I need thing. Wendy at my house. <laughs> me too, yeah, Wendy. I live closer than all the rest of them. Come over to my house and replace some sills <laughs> with me. Yeah, but, yeah. but uh, in the middle of winter, come down here. It's warm. Barry wants to know, James, what beer are you on? It looks delicious. What are you oh, drinking, James? You know, it's a new beer. It's, uh, it's called, um, uh, it's got a great name, uh, uh, Holy, Holy Roller by a, uh, uh, a New Orleans brewery, a new New Orleans brewery that I can't think of, but the name, the, the, uh, the name of the beer is Holy Roller and it's an IPA. It's, uh, it's a really great beer. 6% urban alcohol. South brewery. Is it urban South brewery? Urban yeah. South brewery. Exactly. It's very good. This episode of Context and Clarity brought to you by Urban <laughs> South urban Brewery. South. Try their new Holy Roller IPA. I, I saw Holy Roller and I couldn't pass it up. There you go. It's a hazy brew, a hazy oh, IPA. Hazy. Brew hazy. Hazy. Yeah, hazy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody be cool. Mark's here. There is uh -oh. a, uh, uh -oh. <laughs> there is an Abita, a which is a Louisiana beer. Has a uh, purple haze, right? I'm not haze. crazy about a beat of beers, though. Um, I don't know what it is, but they seem they seem a little too uh, like they pour syrup in them or something. Mm. Um, I I don't know what it is, but I never like cane syrup, yeah, cane syrup or something. Um, but I'm not a big fan of a beat of. <laughs> I like beer. It's definitely not like that here. It's definitely <laughs> not the I like beer crowd here. Yeah. But, but, um, I don't, what, what, another I, thing that I thought was interesting in the book when he said a lot, I knew he was gonna, you're going to get us in trouble, Mark. Um, uh, you're, <laughs> 
was this was, episode um, of context and clarity part. brought to you by holy roller beer <laughs> about um uh about being able to take time out for other things in your life besides you know besides your career and then that you probably won't be able to get as much done but you'll but you'll have um inspiration from the things that you do with your family yeah there's there's definitely you know as you as you read or listen to the book you hear um you hear some of the regrets come out you know the things that he feels like he missed out on and you know I, you'll have to listen to it to, you can get a sense of some of his trials and tribulations so to speak over the years um but you know a fair point right we're if if you're running a business you know is is that the same as being a songwriter i think in, in a lot of ways um what what have you missed out on in the time that you've been working late or meeting with clients or whatever you've been doing. Barry wants to know if you've had the Dear Loser beer from Sub Pop, probably his favorite American label. And it was a good beer too. Mm. I have not. I that one even heard of that. Not. Not like something worth trying. Dear Loser beer. Hmm. So hmm. getting out and doing things unrelated to me is so, it is, is critical because if I'm doing the same thing all the time, even if it's creative, I get kind of ground down. And uh, especially if it's a lot of left brain stuff. Uh, but uh, even even if it's the same kind of creative stuff, um, uh, I, 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 I sort of uh, lose my my juju or whatever it is. And uh, if I go here, go there, experience this, um, and it has nothing to do with architecture or or music or maybe it is music or maybe it is architecture but it's totally different then that sort of feeds my creative spirit and then i come back a lot more fresh i tend to recirculate ideas when i don't get out much when i'm just yeah. by myself i the, the ideas just kind of churn like that like that little spiral on the computer oh yeah and if I go and come back, it's, it's I feel uh, revitalized and creatively. If I go yeah. some road trip or yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think definitely a road trip. A road trip definitely inspires you. I mean, I don't know. It just inspires just like getting out of your normal everyday routine. You know, I think. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, supposedly yeah. that keeps us from. Um, if we're seeing new things, our brain is kind of occupied with seeing the new things and not ruminating over our issues, whatever they are. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. Mark wants to know if the book's worth listening to while he's mowing the lawn this weekend. You have to have a big lawn. I think the list. first, I think the first, like Mike, like Jeff says, the first half of it for the, just the discussion about, you know, the pro creative process and definitely worth, worth it. Um, yeah. the second, the second half, I don't know where it breaks time wise in the three hours yeah. is, is much more of where it's like specific kind of, I don't yeah. know what was like, they're like almost like, you know, step one, you know, you can do it this way and step two, you can try doing this yeah. way. And, Kind of is yeah, is prescriptive is is something that's you know worth checking out, but it's it, it's I think it's harder to listen to it and do something else. It's uh, uh, that's what I think too. I mean, it was just it was difficult for me to like kind of listen and and you know I've told you before like I can't really listen to audiobooks or podcasts like while I'm trying to do something because I get I just like start really just thinking about everything and I think that was I mean I actually had to stop it and back rewind and like to. And I am one of those readers that's probably more, I mean, I don't think I do well with, with audio books, but I don't know, maybe, maybe in the car, it would be easier for me to do it or something. I'll have to, I'll have to try it in the car because I am listening to music. So maybe I could listen to that, the same thing, you know, maybe it would help. Well, but I do really like car, to read. What? You, you, in the car, I mean, you may end up in Denver. <laughs> 
I know. I know. I know. No, that's, that's true. I know. So Barry, <laughs> well, I Barry did end says, up in Colorado a couple weeks ago, which I didn't expect I was going to be in Colorado, but we went to Colorado <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of New Mexico. We just went up there that way because it was just it, there was too much rain, so we couldn't get mm. the airstream back into Chaco Canyon, so we had to go to Mesa Verde. But yeah, Chaco Canyon is not uh, is a bumpy ride. And if I will get this really is the rainy, second it's... time that I haven't been able to go there because of the rain. So I will get there for the third time. Some sometime. I think I'm just gonna br I'm just gonna bring a four wheel vehicle and not take any kind of airstream or anything. I'm just like, oh, God. Barry says that the book is one hundred percent worth a, a listen. So what I'm picturing is Barry listening to the book. Drinking a deer loser beer and milking the grass all at the same time. It can happen. Uh, that's, yeah. I would also I would also recommend listening to Wilco's song "Hate It Here," which is about doing chores around the house. Nice. I try to stay busy. Well, how's that go? I try to stay busy. I do something. I, I do the dishes. I mow the lawn. It's about his, you know, his wife left him or something. So he's like trying to keep the house neat till she comes back. Yeah, but, yeah, good, good country song. Wife leave you. Song. Exactly. So we would also recommend. I would also recommend watching the documentary. Um, I am trying to break your heart about Wilco. Um, when they re when they finished their album yankee hotel foxtrot and sent it off to the and this is in the book sent it off to the yep. record label the label hated it and <laughs> wouldn't accept it from them so it's it's about that that sort of tribulation they have and then sort of friction within the band itself because there was a there was a guy named jay bennett who was really a great arranger and musician in the early Wilco times, uh, who unfortunately died um, after he left. Well, he was actually kicked out of the, he was kicked out of the band, which you'll see in the movie. But uh, there's a lot of the friction there uh, at the time. And, uh, but it's a great, it's a great movie. It's, I think it's by the same guy that did Helvetica and all those documentaries so, or at least he's involved in it he might have produced it but it's a good movie hey so we were talking this morning on clubhouse a little bit and uh i brought up the possibility of uh is there maybe a forum that we can put our original song compositions in and sort of share those around our our group because i would i would put a, a couple of videos or video or audio clips in there and i'd love to hear compositions by all you guys hmm. well we have two of rods here i don't know where we can keep them do we have could we put would, it, and, would, would we put maybe a facebook or a uh, or maybe entree architect uh facebook uh, page and then just set the files in yeah, there the sound entree architect soundcloud um what about dream party rod are you in dream party dream party uh that sounds like a band it does, but it's uh, not. Well, James, you can put your you can post like them up. Dream in there. Police by Cheap Trick. Dream Dream Party. I haven't been on there in a while, so I need to. No, get... I know. I don't know what happened to people's dreams. I haven't done anything in a while. Well, I'm just saying you could post it there, and Rod, I think you might be a member. Maybe you're not a member, but you could put your stuff there. I'm not, but um, you could join. It's not hard to get in. James just. Uh, Put some music to those lyrics that I sent you there. Okay, I'll look at it this weekend. I've got a it's kind of a, it's it's kind of a sad song. It sure is. Don't make it too happy. Well, you know what I love is uh, the dichotomy and and in bluegrass you have these murder ballads, these murder ballads that are ding 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 ding. ding, yeah, ding they're all happy. Yeah. Happy music about the mur with the murder murder ballad. Yeah, there's. I mean, pretty much all ballads seem to be murder ballads. Yeah, I did my PhD on bluegrass murder ballads. If, they're any, if they're any good. 
their murder ballads. <laughs> <laughs> There's some, yeah, I love ballads. That's a totally different subject. There's a lot of good songs mm -hmm. about murder, unfortunately. It's really nice singing in um, Ireland. The ballad singing is when I uh, just recently went to Ireland for a little bit, and uh, and there were some some really nice ballad singing, and the affects of the voice. Some, I mean, some of the soloists. I mean, incredible affects to the voice, and then the ballad was along with that. And uh, I like ballads too. Yeah, they're stories. They are stories, yeah, and they're very dramatic, a lot of them. And sometimes traumatic. Both, yes, yes. I think they have to be traumatic to be a ballad, traumatic. actually. If they're any good. Yeah. They're just matic. There, there is an Ontrarctic SoundCloud, by the way. I don't know if what it takes oh, to there? upload something. Oh, like I didn't that. know that. Cool. Well, I'm, well, I'm going to check out. I downloaded Rod's, um, I put it. Here's one of Rod's. Okay, so everybody copy that down. Oh. Actually, one of those has two <laughs> songs on it. And oh. One of them has one now, song. Are, is it a video too? Am I going to be able to see? No, the they are not videos. Rod? They're just uh, they're just the post of the uh, the uh, cover art. Uh, neither of which I did or like. Um, hmm. So. Well, I can't wait to see it. Um, okay, Jeff, the big reveal. I'm assuming <laughs> you know what the book is going to be next month. That it'll we'll do the big reveal this weekend. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> oh, it's a secret. Is it a secret? Yeah, it's, it's a uh, secret to Jeff, even right now. I think it's. Is what oh, we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah. Jefferson well, said, we can get, like I said, we can, get, we can get back to books. We can get back to themes about accounting software now. <laughs> Everybody write a song about your accounting software. Tonight, you can go see Jeff. Fresh books. Bill Lesh and friends. <laughs> Bill Lesh. I thought he died. Dead or alive. That's a fun game to play. Celebrity data or live. Okay, so I guess we never resolved the where we post the uh, the original songs. So, um, are you guys saying that I need to create a space for that? I guess. Look, I look I'm that. saying that you could post it in Dream Party, so at least we could see or hear your songs. Dream Party. At well, least I, so that you put it out in the world. I'm not saying this because I want everybody to hear my songs. I want to hear other people's songs. And I, I'm just saying that, but I would be willing to contribute my songs. Oh, to I see what you're saying. Okay. I'm not You're assuming I'm, that everyone has, yeah, that other people have I songs. I force you guys to listen to my songs. Uh, but I would like I to. Like your I like your songs. I guess that's why I was suggesting it. Or so, your tunes, anyway. I don't know tunes. if I've heard your songs. Did you, um, Chris, Chris said that we should do the creative process. Is it hard, Michelle? It looks hard, that book. No, it's not hard. I just have, would have to wear readers. I would read from it, but I can't read the small type. But See, that's um, what I mean. It readers. looks like one of those books. No, 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 it's no. But the, no, you know, the good thing is that you of... can just pick. You can pick who you want to, like, if you want to read about Pablo Picasso, then you can read about him, right? Because it's chapter. I think it sounds very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so you can just read the people that you want to read. I haven't read the whole thing because some of them I start to read it. I'm like, no, I'm not, which is like with me with every book, actually. So, you know, we're all skip ahead. And then I'm like, oh, gosh, you know, and I read the end and I'm like, OK, I'm done with it. Well, <laughs> my, my big thing is whether or not it's an audio book. So I'm looking that up right now. Yeah, that's yeah. a thing, too. It's okay. like check on that. So there's although the, there's, the creative process book is is like Michelle said, it's it's like broken down. It's like. You know, it's like, an inter I don't know if it's, a, I can't remember if it's an interview or it's just excerpts of, you know, Henry Miller writing about his creative process yeah. or if he's being interviewed about his creative process. I, I don't remember. Yeah, and but I don't know like whether that. So it's just like yeah. a couple of pages of this person and a couple of pages of that person. And so, yeah. So there's on Amazon, there are two listed. There's the creative process. A symposium yes, by Brewster Gis Giselin, yeah. yes, which is the one that you held up, 
And then yeah. there's one called the Creative Process Reflections on the Invention in Arts and Sciences, Arts and Sciences by the same author. Hmm. But same published author, 30 years them. later. Which which one is that? Creative Process in the Individual? No. Well, you know what? I'm just going to let you decide what it is, Jeff, and then you'll tell us this weekend. <laughs> well, the, the Creative Process Reflections on Invention in the Arts and Sciences has selections from D.H. Lawrence, William Wordsworth, Albert Einstein. I think it's the same. the same people. Yeah. I've got, uh, here, I got mine. Found mine. Um, is it the same book, but it's just not? Mine is, uh, mm -hmm. mine is by Ghislaine Maxwell. It's <laughs> <laughs> a different kind of creativity. Uh, mine is, <laughs> I, I thought she didn't kiss and tell. Mine is uh, creative process. It says explained in their own words, 38 brilliant men and women, including Albert Einstein, Vincent van Gogh, I Friedrich think... Nietzsche, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So I really think this is the one women. Michelle has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the like same the cover. Mm -hmm. I, so the... Um... The later one says this unique anthology brings together material from 38 well-known writers, artists, and scientists who attempt to describe the process by which original ideas come to them. Mm -hmm. I think it must be a republishing. Large yeah. print version. What's the name of the book? Creative Process, Creative Process. Symposium. Mine is a symposium. That's yeah, the that's one that was one published yeah. in 52. Yeah, mine is... Uh... Mine is old. It's all yellowed and <laughs> so is mine. I, I can tell I bet I know what it smells like. <laughs> the twenty second printing. Wow. Yeah, I I, have, I think I have the same. Nineteen fifty two. Yeah. By the Regents of the University of California. Oh, so I wonder if the creative process has mm. changed in seventy years. Yeah, now you just look it up on the internet, right? You just do um idea right. generator on the creative. internet. Like, right. I'm going to Google creative. that right now, see what it says. Let me look into this. Well, but, I, I, but uh, I, you know, it's it's a very interesting it's a very interesting process that I don't think gets studied enough, really. You know, I mean, yeah. when I think about it, does is there really a sort of breaking down and study of the creative process like other things are studied? I, probably somewhere, but. I, I, yeah. I still think there's a lot of mystery associated with it and metaphysics that are, and, and a lot of that is true though, too. So. There's a lot of mystery uh, with the creative process. And yeah, I, where did it come I from? think taking it into a completely analytical, not that you can't break it down. And I, I break it down a lot, but, uh, but to completely break it down and be analytical about it, um, some, I get to a point where if I analyze it too much, I neuter the inspiration. I exactly. The and see, James, that was what was so of like difficult. A flow yeah. state. Yeah. And like it, a flow that was so state difficult. Or, right. Yeah. When we were in her class, it was so, we were so frustrated with her. Like she kept on asking that about stuff. And then we were always like laughing, going like, oh my gosh, what would you say to your brother? Right. Because she was Frank Gehry's sister. And if you're like, are you going to make him go through this process too? <laughs> but I mean, it was, it was good. And I think she was selling all of the, all of the ideas to Apple because she was working with Apple at the time. So we always felt like we were just like this, this like scientific experiment you know, which we probably were but I you were a psychology to... experiment yeah it's like uh... well even for i mean for the tech thing right because she's working with apple on stuff so it's probably they were just trying to figure out stuff like that. all right well we will uh, look for a book written by frank gary's sister <laughs> and Doreen um... nelson Hey, I've got a story about uh, Frank Gehry. When I when I was at uh, at the teaching at Frank Lloyd Wright School of Architecture, the students would have this thing that they would love to do. They would get a piece of paper and they would they would crumple it up and they would throw it throw it on the table and say, "Hey, look, there's Frank Gehry's new building." 
<laughs> no, I think no, that's the way he does it. Isn't that his creative process too? Exactly. I thought it was. He's, he's done that. But, you know, but did you watch the master class that he did on? No, I want to watch it. It was a good. Class. Was it good? You know, it, it was a. It was okay. You know, I mean, it was. It was. You know, he's a guy who does a looking. lot of things talking about what he does. So, but I didn't. He didn't like tell you how to design things or what his. Hmm. No. Good. There's two, things that, I like. there's, there's two thing. things that I like about that I like about Frank Gear. One is that he just started doing the parking garages in his 50s, you know, the Santa Monica part. And so really it was like in his 50s, he kind of like took off. And that the other, you know, and and I mean, just being able to, you know, do those things, and and he's done these residential things, and the and the their studios for rent in downtown L.A. in this complex, and I swear, I I would love to get one. They're they're super expensive. They're like twenty five hundred dollars, which which actually isn't very expensive considering that they're like in a high rise apartment. But I wouldn't want to go over three stories because I don't I don't want to live that high, but um. But there, there's also like this just amazing, all these amenities that they have there, which when you start to like look at all the stuff, I'm like, well, for $2,500 for a studio, that's not too bad for there. I don't know. I looked at those and it was, um, it was very clean, but it didn't look very mm -hmm. formally, like in any kind of, there wasn't anything that interesting about it, except for the uh, floor to ceiling windows and it was clean yeah. and it had nice cabinets, but I mean, it wasn't a piece of paper all rolled up. Hey, it's no, interesting no, to tell that no. you, said, no. you said Frank Gehry got started, uh, really took off in his 50s. And I can kind of identify with that because I feel like uh, in my 30s, 40s, and really early 50s, um, I was just trying to figure it out. And uh, it was it was a, a little haphazard. Um, but and I was I was I was learning a lot, but I it, I didn't feel like I, I even started to understand design until I was in my fifties. Yeah, well, you know, he did that cardboard furniture, and and he made a lot of money from that. I think that's what allowed him to sort of open up and be less reliant on hmm. making payroll. And then I also think, and I've never heard anybody talk about this, but. He was very tuned into the LA art scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are artists like Ken Noland and people like that. And I know he did a studio for Ken Noland, but Ken mm -hmm. Noland did these paintings that left a lot of the material of the painting exposed. Like he wouldn't, you know, if this is the canvas, he wouldn't paint the whole canvas. So you'd see can it'd be like unfinished. And then Gary started doing these unfinished kind of buildings like his house and things like that we he'd leave these materials exposed things like that and i really gravitated towards that kind of stuff when i was mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm. um i didn't you know his later as he evolved i've, I've got less you know came much less interested in in those things but that 1980s kind of frank gary i really really always really liked yeah, the the lofts were around the around the corner from us. The lofts were, uh, you know, he did those three lofts, and Dennis Hopper was living in one of them. Was, and um, you know, and then we had the binoculars building, so that was kind yeah. of, you know, just being in the, in you know, in Venice Beach in the nineties. I mean, Catherine was there. Catherine, he's, I Catherine knows. Her. That's right. Catherine's That's a sci arc. I was that there. Yeah, a lot I think. Of it. We, Catherine I and I didn't live that far away from each other, but we just didn't know. We, we probably had met at some point, know. but I don't, yeah, we just didn't know. We didn't know each other, yeah. Well, you probably passed yeah. each other. Roller, you probably roller skated by each other on the Venice <laughs> boardwalk. <laughs> Rollerbladed. I did never you roller skate? You did rollerblade. Like, I had rollerblades for a little while. I did have rollerblades. Or anything? No, I, wasn't. I, I lived right I wasn't on the boardwalk there, for a little bit. In my in my rollerblades, <laughs> no. I can imagine. No. Maybe at Albert's habit, I might have met you. Oh, I was there every day for a while. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. So that was probably. I would have been in there with a baby though. I didn't have a baby like, then. Yeah. No babies. So I, like. I had like one and two kids by that point. 
people thought it was crazy. People in the architectural community were like, oh my God, like, you guys have two kids? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> they, never mind. This is probably I, where I had to pull the plug on this. this. Is, I think this is where I'm going to go. I got. I have to go. So I'll just see you all uh, later. Yeah, you, you could do Love your own it. research on that. Um, hey, thanks actually, for this conversation. Actually, I um, I I came across a pretty interesting book, but I don't think it's probably on Audible because it's uh, it might be a little more. Hey, Catherine, jump off the call. Yeah, she <laughs> left right when I started talking. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a book called um, Icebergs. Oh, Dead ahead. Let me find my. <clears throat> It's not about the, the Titanic. It's called no. Iceberg Zombies and the Ultra Thin. It's by a guy named uh, Matthew Souls, and he's an architecture professor in Vancouver. And the book is about um, basically how financial capitalism has ruined architecture. Mm. So it's it was a very interesting interview with him. Yeah, I was just talking. Uh, we, I was over at um, the uh, at somebody's office yesterday talking to him, and he's an urban designer, and um, and he he's writing this book. So he had all this thing. I, I posted some of the video, and then the other video was like too long to post on Facebook. But but he's writing this book, and it does it does kind of go in, through that whole thing, and about how now we're at this point where. You know the things that are holding us back are basically financial things like we could solve a lot of things but it's like the financial means to yeah, uh, it's a financialization yeah. you know yeah. everything is everything is is uh for the uh, i guess the storage and accumulation of financial the finance industry and its mm -hmm. benefactors and its shareholders and things like that as opposed to creating shelter and aesthetics and things like that architecture yeah. become a vessel yeah. for wealth accumulation mm -hmm. which it all it, it always sent in a way always has been but so now you, it's so it's, it's speaking of speaking of writing eudora welty is a mississippi writer uh under her house had an interesting i have two maybe i saw you there but um, as an interesting take, were you, on, were you rollerblading? I was. Yeah, <laughs> I lived in the neighborhood there yeah. for a while. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, so uh, she talks about um, writing. The writer's job, she said one time, is to explode the imagination and and to just put something in into the imagination that just flowers flowers and is that our job as as designers i mean take the commodification out of it and the financial stuff out of it the creativity that we're bringing to it is it our is well is our job or one of our jobs to put something out there that causes people to think about new things to think about things they would never think about otherwise and i think that's what she was talking about think about it in a new way mm -hmm. um to me that's creativity it is yeah, exactly. And that was what we kind of came up with at the end of the class, but we were just so we were just so angry most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Anger driven creativity. Uh, that's Anger -driven. I listen when when I need a break from all of the uh, the context and clarity research, I listen to a, a true crime podcast called Morbid and I think there's probably some anger driven creativity <laughs> being <laughs> reported on in that podcast so now, now jeff i just i just watched the documentary woodstock 99 and i i, I mm. thought i saw you there uh in the mosh pit mosh it, so corn. the um speaking of angst when, and anger when, when i uh yeah when i <laughs> got my first job out of college uh, the senior designer in our firm, no one, no one knew this for a long time, but he had been at the original, you know, the, the real Woodstock. And the way that people found out about that was that writer in, in 99, he disappeared. It's like, where, what, 
What happened? Where did he go? Or, or was it? Yeah, was it ninety nine? Is that right? Whatever, whatever it was, he went back for that version of it. Oh, the reunion. I guess. Yeah, the reunion. Yeah, it was quite and, a different uh, uh, concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was, uh, but that's when people found out that he had been at the original. Like, where where did Andy go? Well, he's, in, he's in New York, or well, you know that kind of thing. So, so interestingly enough, um, I know a guy who was there. Uh, 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 the guy here in Hattiesburg was the percussionist for King Conga, who was a fresh young band that got the opportunity to play at Woodstock '99. They were just they were just exploding at the time. And uh, uh, he, he, after that concert, even though the concert was just, a, I mean, the festival was just a total disaster. Um, after they performed there, a big record company called him up and flew him to New York. And, uh, and they were a Hattiesburg-based band, and, um, and, but just a rocking band. And this guy's a percussionist, you know, incredible percussionist. And... Um, and flew him to New York and said, okay, we're going to make you guys stars. We're going to, this is all the things we're going to do. And Tony, uh, said, uh, t uh, said, uh, um, uh, after, when he came back, he thought about that and said, you know, I really feel like I need to teach. So on the cusp of getting a big record deal, he quit the band and he was the band. And so it all fell apart. So you never heard of King Conga after that. And I'll be designing. Um, and he came back to, to here and he's at a great school and he's doing a percussion ensemble. He's a teacher and they've won like state championships for 25 years in a row. And and he also on the side, a creative thing on the side, roasts coffee. And I'll, I'm, I'm about to design his new coffee shop. Cool. Which is session based yeah. coffee shop. Yeah. So, so that was a, a situation where he he didn't see the creativity in being rich and famous, and it didn't speak to his soul. And what he really wanted to do was teach. And so he had the uh, and this is this is incredible. He had the the wherewithal to say, as a as a twenty something year old kid, to say, no, that's not what I want. I want to teach. And so that that. That was from the Woodstock '99. That's amazing. They got that exposure. That is amazing. Well, that is a crazy documentary, gotta, though. You got to speak to your soul. Well, maybe I'll maybe yeah. I'll watch that. That's what the art is in the soul. It, it, I mean, it, it comes from the soul. You can't you can't uh, intellectualize the art. There, it, it's that it's that 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 spark of inspiration, and then yeah. you can work. You can get you can work with the prefrontal cortex to uh, modify that and mold it. But that something about that spark is a kind of instantaneous. And then you got to, you got, then you got to, then you got to do something with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, point. on that note, I have to do some drafting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to work with the prefrontal cor cortex. <laughs> so thanks everybody. Thank <laughs> I was let you. Thank I, I will uh, uh, let you know what next month's book is. We still got a few more days left in August, but I'll let you know That's right. uh, this There's, weekend geez. what uh, what the book month. is. It is a long month, so thanks. This is a great conversation. Thank you, and thanks for the suggestion, Rod. It was a good one. Yeah. Oh, you're um, welcome. I'm hey, glad hey. you enjoyed it. I'm glad yeah, folks out there had fun oh. reading it, and um, yeah. you know, we all kind of think about uh, a little bit about just stuff where ideas ideas come from and yeah. freeing oh, ourselves up a little bit. And Rod and I are going to get together and write some songs. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, I, I, I sent you the lyrics. Okay. Virtual. I, I wanted to know if Catherine, I wanted to know if Catherine's thing was um, the almost brushed my hair was, was based on almost cut my hair. Cause she said that. Could be. Yes. Yeah, so we have to, I don't we know have to ask her about that later. Yeah, can I ask okay. her? <laughs> yeah, yes, thanks. All right, well, All right everybody, have a great weekend. I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. <laughs> From South Pacific. All right, have a good weekend, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. See Ciao. you Monday.